Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon again. We are about to start our second session of the third day of Women Entrepreneurship Congress. Thank you so much for being with us. I would like to extend my gratitude to all of you. To have this uh, session, we have a good number of panelists. But what we are going to talk about, we are going to talk about achieving sustainable development goals through innovation and entrepreneurship. So to do this, we have three panelists with us. I would like to introduce them with all of you. First of all, we have Ms. Shebahat, Managing Director, Founder at YSM Consultancy, WLL. Hello, Shebahad. Hi, Beauty. How are you? It Fine. Has been, uh, very and we have, yeah, and we have with us Senela Joysoria, founder and CEO, Women Empowered Global. And we have with us Dr. Hazel Harrington, founder, Destiny Arise, and Global Goodwill Ambassador for Australia. So, welcome to our session. First of all, I would like to invite all of you for your interaction to our audience, starting with Shabahat. Shabahat. Hi, Beauty. Thank you very much uh, for a beautiful uh, organization. Uh, you brought us together from all over the world. Uh, I am actually, uh, I can call myself uh, entrepreneur by nature. Uh, I am uh, ex-banker and worked in various departments of banks. And then I did my uh, BSc in chemistry. Now I am just uh, a consultant of business and management and uh, creating an opportunity for our young entrepreneurs in financial technology side because of being the financial sector background. And we are based in Bahrain and I am the Senator of World Business Angel Investment Forum, which is uh, helping me out uh, to understand uh, worldwide uh, entrepreneurs and startup uh, ecosystem. And I would like to uh, be with, uh, connected with our uh, friends and all our entrepreneurs all around the world. Thank you, Dapodi. Thank you, Beauty. Thank you, Shabahad. Now I would like to know from Senela Jaisuria. Thank you so much, uh, Beauty, uh, to you and to the wonderful organizing team that has put this fantastic conference together. Happy to be here, of course. So my name is Sunila Jai Surya, founder CEO of a global company um, that has presence in 23 company, uh, countries around the world. Um, my origin didn't always begin with entrepreneurship. It was quite a subsequent relationship with entrepreneurship, but to date, I'm so excited that um, I get to work with leaders around the world. I'm a certified coach. And what I do is I uh, mentor and I train people into C-level positions around the world uh, for global impact. So I'm so excited to share with you today and, um, and, and work with you on really opening up your thoughts uh, on entrepreneurship and to really inspire you to achieve your dreams. Thank you, Beauty. Thank you, Sunella. Now, I'd like to invite Dr. Hazel Harrington. Good evening, Beauty. It's such a pleasure to be invited to speak today here at the Women Entrepreneurship Congress. And I'd also like to thank a CTO co-chairman for the invitation. I'd also like to thank everybody that's watching from around the world. Thank you for tuning in. This is going to be an exciting panelist that you have with you, and it's going to be an exciting program. So my name is Dr. Hazel Harrington, and I am a global speaker, business consultant, and I'm also the Australian Global Goodwill Ambassador. I am passionate about empowering women and youth to become economically independent and self-sufficient. And this program is going to be touching on women, entrepreneurship, and the SDG goals, and it's going to be exciting. So get ready. Yeah, get ready for the learning, new learnings. So, uh, uh, first of all, I would like to know that how do you evaluate the 
role of innovation and economic growth for the sustainable development and which areas of SDGs women entrepreneurs can contribute in the society. So starting with Shibahat. Once again, thank you, Riti, and thank you, Daffodil team, for a wonderful uh, World uh, Women Entrepreneurship uh, Congress 2020. Uh, this is a really a good advantage meeting all over the world. And I would like to welcome to all our, uh, all our participants around the world. And of course, uh, we just met a uh, beautiful uh, two more friends uh, from the Australia and uh, Sunila. It was a wonderful to meet you again. If I go back to our life, uh, it has drastically changed in a year time due to spread of COVID-19. Today, as we speak, what would have been different exactly a year ago? But I would like to ask all our participants and panelists take a moment away from COVID-19 impacts on our daily life and let's focus on sustainability and its development as in our question which come out from beauty. Do you think world is going to be a better place next year or like next decade? Can we achieve well-being and good health can we end poverty, hunger? Can we achieve gender equality? Can we halt climate change? Global goals actually are who we humanity want to be. And it's quite ambitious with plant year, which is coming close 2030. We have only 10 years to go. How do we achieve economic growth for a sustainable development where innovation comes in. Definitely, without innovation, it's not possible. Innovation, indeed, is a matter of change in the life of individuals, organizations, and institutions, driven not only by scientific and technological advances, but also by social expectations, values, and demands, where women empowerment is coming in actually. In all these headlines, I believe in woman impact. However, innovation has had an impact on our society. What makes the difference is it finalization and the social, economic and environment in which we live. Innovation and diffusion of new technologies are indispensable for economic growth. They lead to increased productivity, which is very important, and to the creation of wealth. But the wealth is not for keeping yourself, serving back to community. And economic well-being, including decent and green jobs. Innovation and technology are also instrumental to promoting the structural transformation of economies at different stages of development. By implication, they are also key to enhance competitiveness. I also strongly believe in entrepreneurs are quick and enthusiastic to turn around invention to innovation, to ease our life in every stage. All successful in innovative ideas are coming from entrepreneurs who are in need of financial help. At this stage, but we all know women entrepreneurs can contribute to any sustainable development goals, same as their partners who are in different gender. Having said that, one of the SDG gender equality, advancing gender equality is critical to all areas of healthy society, from reducing poverty to promoting health, education, protection, and well-being of children and future generations. We all need to work on all these social progress. They all have different indices in the world, social progress indices or like gender equality indices. We cannot go in details all this because it's like academic work. But innovation as an end, not a means should promote a change that reduces inequalities and promotes well-being as stated 
in the Sustainable Development Goals, which are universal call to action to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity. This is coming from United Nations resolution, actually. We all know we have one planet as of today, and it will not disappear. Even we disappear, the planet will be here for a long time, as per the scientists. Therefore, we need to find our way to live in, and this is mostly, I believe in, without gender uh, equality is not possible. And of course, the possibility is in our hand. Let's get together and work for it. Thank you for the Thank first you. question. Beauty. Thank you, Shabahad. Now, I would like to know from Senela Jaisaria in this regard. So, Beauty asked the question, how do you evaluate the role of innovation for economic growth and sustainable yes. development? I want to first take a quick step back and give a quick context to where I, I'm speaking from. Firstly, a quick background to Women Empowered Global is that it's a global platform that empowers women around the world through education, career advancement, and entrepreneurial programs. And with regards to SDG per se, uh, we believe in quality education. We believe in gender equality. Uh, we run programs in Africa for female entrepreneurs. We have um, award-winning speakers connecting global leaders with global participants. Um, and when you talk about gender equality, we run a talk show on entrepreneurship, leadership building and advocacy for social stigma, self-limiting and societal beliefs. Uh, we do coaching, mentoring, skill assessment, skill training. Um, then in terms of SDGG, decent work and economic growth. We know that economic growth is on the other side of poverty alleviation. So it's so crucial in our uh, race to achieve uh, the SDGs. And also, we do a lot of emphasis around reducing this inequality. And what our work around that is specifically around empowering and promoting women in non-traditional careers, which is also very important. Uh, corporate decision-making positions, female entrepreneurship, uh, promoting social and economic inclusion of all. Uh, how can we increase female representation in innovation as a subject itself in tech, in STEM, in entrepreneurship? So this brings me back to answering your specific question. So in my line of work, I feel so appreciative of the fact that I get to work with female entrepreneurs around the world almost on a daily basis, uh, whether it's coaching them, whether it's grooming them, whether it's mentoring them. And I can definitely see how impactful innovation is. Uh, I see innovation serving like an engine to take a person, to take a business, to take an idea forward. Uh, so let's first understand what is innovation. That's important. Is innovation, are we talking about just modification or making some enhancement of sorts? Innovation can sometimes even mean radicalizing and disrupting an industry, as we can see, especially with COVID. So there are different types of innovation. So we have product innovation, process innovation, culture innovation. Uh, we have purpose-driven innovation, value-driven innovation, uh, which is exciting. Then we have marketing innovation, business model innovation. So it's so important for the audience to right now understand that when we talk about innovation, it could mean all these things and its relationship and correlation to impact as well as SDG can be very instrumental. So innovation in the context of COVID, what I have understood globally speaking and supporting these female entrepreneurs is they have understood, my goodness, this is the new normal. I'm like an elastic band. I've been so stretched. If I don't innovate, I will expire. It is possibly, if I can say lightly, the new standard. It is the new normal. And uh, a lot of companies, a lot of startups, a lot of female small business sectors, I can see, are booming. Uh, they are coming out more and more. Um, and one of the things they have come to me with is, Sanella, uh, with COVID impacting my business, I want to be sustainable. We need to have national economic growth. My business needs to be sustainable. But do I need to repurpose my vision? Uh, do I need to recalibrate my business strategy? These are very important conversations when you talk about economic impact and sustainable development. Uh, so I want to talk about the positive side of this, the new normal opportunities I see uh, in respect to innovation. The first opportunity is technology 
and innovation has opened new marketing opportunities for female startups and the small business sector. Uh, you can see that consumers who were once averse towards online marketing and online markets are now more appreciative of. People who didn't necessarily go online to purchase a dress would maybe do that now in the new context. So definitely there are new market opportunities online. E-commerce, fintech are sectors that are booming. AI-driven recruitment platforms are opening up. Online meeting apps, virtual spaces like this fantastic conference that you guys have put together, all possible because of innovation. So innovative tools have definitely opened up a lot of opportunities uh, for sustainability. Opportunity number two, I must say, because this conference is by and large representing uh, women around the world who are entrepreneurs, the new working mandates, the new working arrangements, hey, we're talking about work from home. That has totally disrupted uh, our, uh, our, uh, our norm of, of going to work and doing a nine to five job or walking into our, our company as an entrepreneur and uh, switch on the lights. You're working from home now. And a lot of the times we are probably even nursing a child on the side because we're mothers. Just because we're working from home entrepreneurs doesn't mean we stop parenting. So the opportunities are this. What I've understood is with COVID coming in and a lot of work from home, women are also shifting towards side hustles. They're shifting towards additional income generating uh, positions. Also, I have seen situations where women are looking for more economic growth and sustainability by transitioning careers. Uh, there is a friend of mine who worked in the airline industry for two decades. She recently started to pursue her passion job, which is a baking boutique. So in a nutshell, what I want to say is we are in an exciting era in technology and innovation. And women entrepreneurs around the world can now think beyond borders, do business beyond borders. But of course, they need mentoring. They need the mindset. They need the skill set. But end of the day, yeah. with the mindset of innovation, with the application of innovative thinking, it can open new untapped potential for the economy and it will lead to new opportunities. So I'm Thank you. About that. Thank you, Sanela. Already you have said almost everything, uh, but I would like to know from Dr. Hazel Harrington in this regard. Thank you, Beauty. Ladies and gentlemen, the SDG goals, the whole vision of the Sustainable Development Goals is to leave no one behind. And sadly to say that at the moment, we are leaving a lot of people behind in terms of innovation and technology. Why do I say that? Because we need to reduce the digital divide. Let me explain further. When we say we don't want to leave no one behind, in our SDG goals, the internet and the access to the internet is not so available in the developing countries. At the moment, just 54% of the global population has access to the internet. 4.6 billion people do not have access to the internet. As soon as COVID hit all the nations, what happened is that the developing nations had access to internet. Their children could still go to school. Whereas in Africa, it's been months for the children to get back to school. Yes. We have a problem in our vision and in our plans for the SDG goals. And not only should we be reducing the digital gap, is that we should be also reducing it in terms of price. It is expensive to access the internet in Africa. And a lot needs to be done in this area. Yes. We talk about alleviating poverty for all by 2030. I don't see it. I don't see it because COVID has changed the way that we think and the way that we do business. The way that we do business in developing nations and the way that we do business in developed nations is different. And this is the problem that we have with the SDG goals. Every situation that we have in Africa is different than the developed nations. The developed nations should be investing more money into Africa. 
That's the reality. And the second thing is that in order for us to alleviate poverty and execute justice for everyone on the planet, we need to make sure that we have equality when it comes to women in the distribution of land and when it comes to equal pay. Now, going back to innovation in the role of economic growth and sustainable development, the idea of sustainable development is that in everything that we do, we are making sure that future generations still have access to resources. But, the, but what's happening right now is that there's so much pollution and there's discussions after discussions and there's nothing tangible nothing tangible that we can say in the last 10 years that the SDG has done, nothing. Going back to the COVID response, right now as we speak, talking about COVID, the amazing thing in the developing nations when it comes to COVID is that is it has accelerated their, the digital, their digital presence online, it has accelerated it, uh, it accelerated um, their passion and they, and they to access smartphones and all that. But here's the problem that we have when it comes to COVID is that access to healthcare, access to education is different, is different. So what are we saying when it comes to innovation, when it comes to economic growth and sustainable development? We are saying that the developed nations must invest more in education of our youth. Invest more in the education of our youth by reducing the digital gap when it comes to access to the internet so that if COVID continues, our children still have access to the internet. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hazel. Uh, you have pointed a right thing. We need to invest on education and the developed nations should work on these issues. So if I talk about, oh, already we have discussed about some of the, the issues regarding SDGs. If I talk about how does entrepreneurship can be helping in achieving those AG, uh, sustainable goals and how can women empower empowerment principles to be embedded in achieving SDG goals. So solution we need to be done. I would like to know this solution uh, from you guys. So starting with Shebahat. Yes, I need to open with myself. Uh, thank you very much, Hazel. Uh, it was uh, great to say that yes, now innovate with purpose, leave no one behind. That's the most important crucial question to all of us uh, to know and to recognize. Uh, very true that uh, COVID-19 impacted us differently with the sustainable development goals achievements, that's for sure. But entrepreneurship, as it is commonly known, plays an important role in creating jobs, driving economic growth and innovation improving social conditions, addressing environmental challenges, and enabling you to turn that creativity, energy, and ideas to business opportunities. Very true, in the, as you rightly said, that this all would be faster, quicker than develop, I mean, than the, in developed countries, than the undeveloped countries, where SDGs actually aiming for whole humanity. It's nothing to do with here and there. It's for all over the world. And as you rightly said, this can be only achieved with the distribution, with the social progress in all over the world, with the right of reaching the equal education, equal treatment, equal health, equal well-being. Everything should be similar or same, at least all over the world. And we all need to believe in GDP or like the sort of indices are not destiny. We need to work for the whole world, whole humanity, what we are looking. Actually, SDGs are formed for the humanity where we want to be. Now, with the COVID-19, some of them 
under the SDG 70 goal, 17 goals, some of them will be altered because of the uh, less pollution, less uh, commuting. And in women's side, I believe in some parents or some mothers will be more flexible with their working hours and they will be more efficient with their uh, uh, possible working from home instead of going to office environment and taking children to here and there, but still they need more uh, opportunities which should be created by, uh, of course, uh, governments or institutions. And I would like to say that in here, if you read carefully in the UN resolution, there are no gender differences on the above resolution, the one I told in the beginning. But governments are trying to empower women entrepreneurs with number of projects to help uh, SDGs gender equality goals. I just would like to take a moment again in here uh, to highlight one of the successful startups from Germany. We all know the small German biotech firm, which is called Biontech, formed by the couple, and they are both scientists and doctors. And now we are hoping that uh, there will be a good, at, I mean, uh, outcome from their vaccine, uh, saving the uh, at least coming up a couple of years time the humanity, and of course others will come as well. And we know that now three of them are coming, and this is like giving me some hope that entrepreneurs without gender differences they can work together they can team up together and they can uh, serve to co community and social progress for the whole world and uh, opportunity and challenges for entrepreneurs contributing to SDGs in develop and developing contexts very social issues and environmental problems in different contexts through the lenses of social entrepreneurship. This is also something very crucial for us with the SDGs goal. Social entrepreneurship, eco-entrepreneurship, ecopreneurship, rural entrepreneurship, and women's entrepreneurship. And you know the supranational, national, regional, and local approaches to implementation of sustainable development goals. I personally do still hope if we are really working uh, and collaborating and bringing up our uh, understanding together. And in my view, woman is the, uh, is the, I think, more crucial role on so many SDGs goals. We have, we have a big responsibility as we are born. Thank you. Brittany. Thank you. Thank you, Shabahat. Now I would like to know from Senela on this issue. Thank you, Beauty. So my perspective comes from a very strong female entrepreneurship perspective. Um, I think that female entrepreneurs can go the way and open so many doors for other women. Uh, that's the biggest uh, example and role modeling you can do. It's so reinforcing uh, to the next generation. And I think that when more women um, who understand and own their power and their presence in this world, uh, that makes an impact not only for herself, but also for those around her and the younger generation after her. Um, so, you know, they say that empowering women and girls is the key to social transformation. And, you know, the potential of a female entrepreneur is endless, her potential. Uh, women can make significant impact and contributions in all SDGs, in whatever they choose to invest their capacity in. I want to give an example specifically when it comes to gender equality and reducing inequality as a female entrepreneur. A female entrepreneur, just the very fact of stepping out there and choosing to pursue a career, a leadership role, uh, make a business decision can break negative stereotypes and a negative social norm in her culture even beyond what we can fathom and understand because culture plays a huge role when we talk about entrepreneurship they are not mutually exclusive it's part and parcel so by pursuing a business she actually inspires the next generation she inspires her family she becomes a role model her struggles 
become the stepping stones for others to step up. So beauty, even if you look at my own journey, right, in leadership and entrepreneurship, it's still hard. Um, the pages are tainted, uh, a lot of trials. There's so much trying to pull me down. But I always remind myself when it comes to entrepreneurship, our struggles can be a success story or a reminder to another person. But the important thing to talk about, because we are still going for the sustainability, is this. Take a step back. You talk about how can I empower a female entrepreneur and make it sustainable. The focus usually revolves around economic empowerment, correct? It's about how can I provide funding, uh, how can I you know, do that. But there is another piece that research tells us. If we want to make women empowerment more sustainable, it's also talking about entrepreneurial thinking. That is equally important. How much of our time and attention do we give these female entrepreneurs towards learning the entrepreneurial mindset, growing that strong muscle for resilience? It's not just about funding. Funding is just part of the game. They say over 90% of the startups don't get to celebrate a second year birthday in business. Why is that? So in the context of women empowering, women empowerment, I fully agree it supports SDG and it can make the economy sustainable. But another thing to think of is when we talk about and focus on how we can empower women for sustainable growth, it shouldn't only be about funding, it should also be about the mindset, entrepreneurship training. Yes. Okay, Sanella. Now I would like to proceed to Dr. Hazel Harrington in this regard. Thank you so much, Beauty. So how can women entrepreneurs contribute? And here it is, is that I believe that women entrepreneurs should collaborate with NGOs and public sector to help promote sustainable growth within developing countries. Um, they should think about how industry impacts the lives of those even in developing nations and their well-being. They can use social media to push for policymakers to prioritize the SDGs. And they can also advocate for uh, the education of children and children's rights. And I truly believe that the SDG 9 industry innovation and infrastructure that info, innovation and technological progress are key to finding lasting solutions to both economic and environmental challenges. I'll give you an example. Um, I'm originally from Zimbabwe. And before I moved to Australia, I had access to a gold mine, but let um, the tools, the technological how-to of even access, you know, uh, the, the equipment, and as a woman, this was a huge disadvantage for me. And we have a lot of women in developing countries. They have access to land. They have land rights, but they don't have access to innovation. And so that's how women entrepreneurs can assist and help. And like I said, advocating for children's rights, um, creating entrepreneurship programs. Thank you, Beauty. Thank you so much, Dr. Hazel Harrington. So we are very end of our session. Before that, any last few words from all of you, starting with Shebahad. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh, it was great pleasure to meet Dr. Hazel and Snella. And thank you, Beauty, again, once again, to put us in contact with many others. And I hope we will be communicating uh, further. This is the beauty of getting together. As uh, Dr. Hazel mentioned that entrepreneurs uh, with the gender equality or with the mindset, we should all get together and make a voice for our problems, whether it is STG or differ from the STG under the new situation, which is COVID-19, which is the Yes, true. I mean, the, there were so many important topics under the SDG 17 goals, but now we are ahead of those with, the, as Dr. Hazel mentioned earlier, 
uh, with the digitalization, with the uh, equipment of uh, schooling, because uh, most of the children are out of school and they don't have an internet connection, and they are not really into areas that where is the technology is serving to their needs. I think we believe in we need to go a little bit further with our entrepreneurial act to social progress. I think worldwide we need a social progress uh, in these days. Well, let's work together. We are. We can do it. I believe in. We can do it. Thank you. Thank you, Sinda. Thank, thank you, Dr. thank you, Shivahad. Any last words from Senela? Yes. Uh, for all the wonderful, amazing, strong female entrepreneurs, um, uh, what have you, who have joined from around the world, just some parting words and thoughts from me. Um, I would like you to take a moment to reflect on this beautiful quote. I love this quote so much. Uh, a woman is the full circle. Within her is the power to create, to nurture, and to transform. Uh, that's a quote from Diane Mary Child, and I love that. And another one is this. Empowering a woman isn't about making her strong, because women are already strong. But it's really about how the world perceives that strength. So these are very important paradigms if we really understand this. Women are strong. And what does it really mean to empower her? And I want to borrow the beautiful metaphor by Peter Stevens, uh, where he says, life is an ocean, and I'm the captain of my ship. So to everybody watching right now, I want to remind you, you are the captain of your ship, of your business, and you're on your way to your destination. Life is your ocean. There are going to be three pirates that are going to come along. Pirate number one, fear. Pirate number two, limiting beliefs. And pirate number three, the expectations of others. So my wish for you is that you understand your power as a female entrepreneur and that you learn to own your power and that you learn to navigate your compass because after all, life is an ocean and you are the captain of your ship. All the best. Thank you, Sanela. So I would like to go to Dr. Hazel Harrington. Thank you so much, Beauty. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our program. And I want to leave you with this. At the moment, we've been talking about leaving no one behind with the SDG goals. But we are leaving the underdeveloped countries behind. And we need to address the situation urgently, or else we are not going to meet our 2030 goal. The reality is that we have a vision, SDG goal one, to prevent anyone from living in poverty. But we still have a lot of people, billions of people in poverty in Africa due to this COVID crisis. I'm asking the United Nations to have a relook at these SDG goals and focusing on the, the, on the, 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 the nations, especially these, the, the non-developed nations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hazel Harrington. Thank you all the panelists for joining us and giving you valuable time. Hope to see you in our next program, Cezel. Thank you so much. So what I can say is that um, the day forward, if we talk about the is to a achieve the SDGs goal for uh, using the innovation and technology and entrepreneurship. So you need to believe yourself that you can make the change in the society and around the globe. Thank you so much for programs.